Andy Mudd is from the Association for Public Service Excellence and it advises councils across the UK on the best way to do things, including um, refuse collection. Um, Andy Mudd, take the bins away then. What do you think of that approach? Well, I'm sure it's a last resort for any council um, that's faced with contamination of the bins. It's a lot of bins, isn't it? 2,000, 2,000 households. It is a lot of bins and it maybe demonstrates the size of the problem that uh, that that particular council has got. Um, I think it's unlikely that they've taken that action without trying other things first, um, so, you know, persuading people to uh, to recycle the right things and put the right things in the right bins. I think what, what some of this misses is just how important it is that we do recycle our waste, that we don't keep throwing it in holes in the ground um, where it rots down over hundreds of years and creates problems for uh, for the environment more generally. Is there any reason why councils are getting particularly strict about this now? Well... I mean, it's, it's a complex situation, but we're, we're heading towards missing um, targets that are set across Europe for recycling of, of waste. Um, in England, we're only recycling around about 44% of waste. We need to be moving to 50% by 2020, potentially to 65% by uh, 2030. They're doing much better in Scotland and Wales, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're doing much better in Wales. Um, Scotland is, is not as good, but yes, I mean, the the performance in Wales demonstrates that it's perfectly possible for people to sort their waste in a way which facilitates um, recycling by local authorities. Um, Some commentators say councils are getting tough on it because the price for these recyclables has plummeted, things like cans and paper, and therefore it's costing them money to recycle them anyway, so the extra fines imposed on them by the recycling plants when the stuff isn't sorted properly, they're just no longer willing to bear. Is that true? Um, There's there's certainly truth in that. Um, The the, the falling price of recyclables means it's, it's even more important that we maintain the value uh, of the recyclables, which means that we, we need to not contaminate them. Uh, contaminating the bins reduces the value of the recyclables and in some cases makes it uneconomic to recycle them. I think we need to bear in mind that a lot of the material recycling facilities are run by private sector companies that essentially need to make some money out of this. Um, and if they're presented with material which is contaminated, which they can't sell... Um, then it's going to be uneconomic for them and they're not going to be able to continue. And is that right? They find the local authorities and local authorities are also fined if they send too much for landfill? Well, they will reject it uh, rather than find them. The the financial penalty comes from the fact that it then ends up having to go to landfill or to incineration where the gate fees are much, much higher um, than they are at material recycling facilities. You heard the confusion in Hull. People think they're being penalised because they haven't washed out their bin cans. Um, you do under that, don't you, when you put, I don't know, an olive oil bottle in or a, an old ketchup bottle? Should you be washing these bottles out and so on? People well, just don't really know what they're, su- they're supposed to be doing, do they? And all the contracts are different. I think it varies from area to area, and yes, you're right, all the contracts are different. Generally speaking, people should wash tins and bottles out before they put them in the recycling bin. Do you do that with all yours, then? I I do, actually. How do you get the ketchup out from the squeezy bottle? Well, it's not that hard. With difficulty. No, it's not that hard. You fill it up with hot water, you (laughs) shake it up and pour the water out, and it's it's clean. Well, that works for a glass bottle. But but that's nothing like... it's, It's not the most significant thing here. The significant thing is putting the wrong items in the wrong bin, which isn't difficult. It's not difficult to not put baked bean tins in the paper recycling bin. Why are the rules so different? So why are there some big authorities where you can't recycle the yoghurt pods and others where you can? Why you, can't it be the same everywhere? That's what one of the government ministers has said recently, Rory Stewart. They should all have the same rules. Yeah. Well, it's a very good question um, and goes, to my mind anyway, uh, particularly to the system that the government has quite consciously and deliberately created, which is a market system um, where private companies um, determine what it is that they're going to buy, dependent upon the, 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 the selling on price for those things, um, and some will um, accept some items and some won't. Is it Depends true that some... Depends on the technology some... partly though, if they've got you know, different plastics in particular require different technologies in order to be able to um, get them ready for uh, processing or to or to process them. Is it true that some of the keenest authorities, the early adopters, signed long contracts um, that have now been overtaken by technology so they can't, for example, uh, you can't, for example, recycle some kinds of plastic yoghurt pots where you can in others who are a bit slower to take it up? Yes, that's this, this is true. Typically, um, we've entered into 25-year contracts for... Um, waste processing and that's not plant. wise, is it? That was uh, unwise then. Well, I, I, 
whether it's wise or not, the local authorities that entered into those contracts had little choice. Um, they weren't able to um, spend the, the levels of capital investment that were required. £200 million, say, um, for uh, building uh, uh, an incinerator uh, with, with uh, energy generation. It's a heck of a lot of money. If the private sector is going to make that investment, it needs long-term contracts in order to recover its costs. Andy Mudd from the Association for Public Service Excellence. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.